Hello Newcastle fans TV and welcome to the whiteboard where I do the lineups, predicted lineups and also have a look at the tactics and potential danger men which could hurt us as well. So the, out the last two that I've done I've got the red and one spot on and I only got two out of the Bristol City wrong so this is going to be I think pretty much spot on. If you look, now if you look at the lineups, I'll explain all the arrows and everything in a second but if you look at actually the lineup itself, if I just get out the way for you. Every single one of them has at least, out of the four games so far this season, have started at least three of them. So the only players who have done three, all the rest have done four, is Sidwell, Kyle and Skalak. They're the only, they've played every game, they, well, they've started three out of four, but the rest have all played four. So it's quite a settled side. Let's begin then. So we've got Stocktail and Goal. Uh, Leroy Racine, so we do expect him to get on. He's aging a little bit now, so he'll, he's obviously playing the Premier League, of course. Bruno, who used to play out the right, he's now being brought in as centre back. He's he's aging as well. He's in his late thirties. Uh, depending on what what Rafa's thinking there, maybe used against him over the top ball or Perez in the hole. Who knows? Dunker, we were Lewis Dunker. We were quite heavily linked to over the summer. Bong, we're literally bong on uh, <laughs> down that wing. Uh, Steve Sidwell, right, the reason why I've got Steve Sidwell circled is because he won't attack as much. What he'll do is he'll sit there, he won't bomb on, he'll let the rest get on, he'll just protect because I think this game is going to be counter against a counter. Um, I do expect goals in this, I'd be very surprised if there's no goals in this game. Kyle, what he'll do, he'll support, um, so he'll get up and support if needs to be. He won't play as attacking midfield, like, like, a, like a box to box. Scalak on the Scalak on the right and the left. Sorry, he'll literally get down the byline as per usual and obviously cross it in. On the other side, though, the key man of a switch over. How do we stop him? How do we stop Anthony Knockard? Right, we'll cut. what he's going to do is that's a false position. He will not stay on that right wing. So what he'll do, obviously, I've got the arrow coming. And he'll come in, kind of like a kind of like an, a second attacker midfield role rather than staying there. This is why I think Rosinha and Sidwell coming over is really important because I think going backwards, that's where Newcastle could hurt, knock out going the other way. So that'll be interesting on the left wing because I think you'll, you could potentially play uh, Gufran on the left wing just to look after him, track back. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think Gufran will play there. We'll come on to that in a second as well. Now, obviously, he'll get down the byline. Hemed will be supporting. He, it's, it's almost like a 4-4-2. But he'll be supporting Glenn Murray, which Glenn Murray is literally key. Um, so Glenn Murray, the reason I've got all the arrows all over the place is because he is literally a fox in the box. They'll get balls in the box. He'll pick up ricochets. He'll have a second chance. He's very, very smart. He's a fox in the box, which Newcastle, um, our newest is probably Gale. But I think Murray's better at being a fox in the box than Gale. I know Gale's missing, I know. But trying to give you comparisons, you know. So, Hemed will just feed it in. I think Knockard will whip it in. We'll have Kyle over the t over him. We'll have Skalek. They're going to feed Murray. That's where they're going to get the goals from. Uh, both of these guys are a threat. They've both got, what, three goals so far this season. So they are a real threat hitting us against us. This is interesting, man. I'm really, really looking forward to this one. But how will Newcastle line up? Okay, Newcastle's turn. So this is what I think could be the side. I think Matzels will keep his position in goal. I think he'll go for Nita at right back because I think it could be a little bit too early for Yedlin. I hope I'm proved wrong because I'd like to see Yedlin come in. I think he'll go for Paul Dummett at left back. I don't think he'll play here as Scamas. Lascelles and Vemma, our first choice pairing. Hayden and Shelby look like they're starting to be our first choice in midfield now. I think he'll play Gufran on the left. I know my pen's running out. I apologise. Diarmi in the hole with Perez as the striker. But I would have liked to see Perez here. And maybe Armstrong, but I think Rafa will go with Perez because he scored two goals. Hopefully I'm proved wrong because I'd like to see Adam Armstrong come in. And then Matt Ritchie on the right-hand side as well. So let me explain all the scribbles as per usual. Right, let's start with the left-back. The reason I've got Paul Dummett underlined is because, as I've already mentioned, he's going to come up against Anthony Knockyard. So it's going to be difficult, isn't it, for Paul Dummett. He's in for, for a torrid time because Knockyard will come in and he won't stay on the flank. So... Paul Dummett has probably had a word of Rafa this week explaining that. Anita, on the other hand, I think he'll give, I think he'll bomb on Vernon Anita or it's Yedlin, but I do think it'll be uh, I do think it'll be Anita. Hayden, what Hayden it look very, very um nice, pretty on the ball. What he'll do is he'll just hang around there, picking up the scraps, you know. Shelby, of course, he'll want the ball, he'll want to start spraying it out wide to goof around on his bike. Get it to Perez, get it to Yami in the pockets, you know, because those two players like it in the pockets. And then spread it across to Richie as well. Coming on to Matt Richie, 
we know what he does. We know that he's he's one of the better wingers we've had in the last few years already because the signs are there. Uh, he'll come in, he'll go down the byline, but he works his socks off going backwards as well, which is key, which I think Johan Gufran, especially with Knockout on that right-hand side, is going to have to do that. That's why I think he'll go with Gufran on the ring rather than Perez because Perez played their last game against Cheltenham and done really well. So going backwards, he's a workaholic. He's not. I don't think he's great going that way. But going backwards, for weight games, Gufran's probably better than Perez. Well, he is better than Perez going backwards. Backwards, that is. Diarmit in the pocket, I think he needs a big game because, yes, he had the assist against Bristol City, but uh, in his home debut, didn't look too great. Uh, bumped into him at St. James's Park the other day as well. Watch out for that video next week. And Perez in the pocket. Now, not in the pocket, sorry, because we want Diarmit. Now, he could, you know, put Diarmit here and move Perez in the pocket. Can Perez run the channels? Can he could can he do a gale off off the striker? Because Perez is quite is static static. He wants the ball to his feet rather than running. He's not that type of player. Maybe this will change round. Maybe Armstrong will come as that man and Perez in the pocket move to Army somewhere else. You know, it's an interesting one because we've got injuries to Mitrovic, uh, Aaron's, and we've also got Gale missing as well. So Brighton will be licking their lips with this one. Um, but let me know what you think um, of your lineup and any potential potential banana skins. Except from Knockyard, he's obviously the one. And obviously, we've just got to keep an eye out for Glenn Murray as well, with these lot as well. Stop the crosses coming in, which is the fullback's job as well. Right then, hope you like the tactics board video. I've been Lee on behalf of Newcastle Fans TV. See you later.